After a long... <clears throat> Great start to the recording. After a long search, Luke and the professor finally reassemble the entire photograph. With the entire photo assembled, they are able to confirm what the Elysium box looks like. Unfortunately, right after that, a sudden gust of wind blows away a piece of the photo. With the rest of the photo in hand, they decide to make one more pass through the town to find information. Good morning, everybody! It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. In the last episode, we assembled the photograph, and we saw how it was assembled. There were two pieces in the middle, not like one right in the dead center. So, I don't know how that magically became a centerpiece that flew away, but whatever, we're not going to question it. In this episode, we're just going to continue on with the adventure, because it's too scary to go in there right now. Now, before we start, I want to show that my pick rats look a bit different from what they looked like in the last episode, and that is because I was cheap! I went back and played the last episode so that I didn't fail that other puzzle, because I'm cheap like that. Professor Layton, sir! Martin, my good man, whatever is the matter? The inspector has found the person responsible for Dr. Trader's murder! I, am, I like how his mustache flutters in the wind. We really get to see that all that often, because he's always just like, Yes, sir, right away, sir. I have strict orders to round everyone up at the hotel as soon as possible, sir. Understood. We will head there right now. Come, Luke, let's hurry. Alright, <laughs> whatever. See the progress? Gee, I wonder. Chapter 6 The Road to Hairs and Castle. I don't know why I was turning to Yoda the last second, but whatever. Uh, I don't think she has any puzzles for us, and it doesn't seem like we missed any between these two chapters. That's nice. Uh, but I don't know. I kind of want to just like dip in and out of these places to see if they have any puzzles. So I said in either last episode or a few episodes back that I was tempted to record the rest of the LP right here and now. Which may have been a bit weird, because like, I don't want to like burn myself out, and I was sort of hoping to have this recording session, have all these recording sessions be a bit more spread out throughout the course of our adventure. I don't even know what I'm trying to say, but uh, basically, I've decided that I will try to record the entire LP tonight, because we're in the final two chapters, and also, uh, something special is happening in my life tomorrow, so I'd rather have all my time freed up so I could focus solely on that. Uh, more info on that later, though. Hey, we got a puzzle. No one in this town ever wants to do anything with me, so I'm always all by myself. I'm, it stinks. What do you say, mister? I know a pretty good game called Solve the Puzzle. Wanna play? It's Professor Layton's favorite game. Puzzle number 73, Can Conundrum. A number of identical cans are hanging from a tree. While all the cans here may look empty, one is actually filled with water. See if you, uh, see if you could find it, Jesus. When deducing your answer, ignore the weight of each string and stick. Hint number one. Study each can one at a time and observe how they're balanced relative to each other. Hint number two. Notice how the biggest stick is level even though it's connected to the three at, the, at a point of the stick's center. This shows that the water must be in one of the four cans hanging from the left side of the big stick. Hint number three. We know that the water is in one of the four cans on the left, so finding that can in question should be a breeze. Just look at the position of the four cans on the left relative to the string attaching all four cans to the big stick above. Which can looks heavier than the others? The solution is A. Consider this puzzle solved. Given us all these multiple choices, but the answer is always just the first one. Leaves no puzzle unsolved. Nicely done. The answer is A. Oh, I knew that puzzle was gonna be too easy for you, but I just, I'm just a kid. What do you expect? I don't know any harder ones, but some of the grown-ups in town might. It's still a good puzzle nonetheless, so don't feel too bad about it. Doesn't have anything new for us. I guess I'm gonna cut away and see if I can find any puzzles on my own. If I don't find any, then I'll just meet you in front of the hotel. Sounds like a plan? Okay, cool. See you in just a moment. And, of course, the only puzzle I was able to find was the one that we found on our way out here, so that was a complete waste of time. Okay, moving on. Oh, Mr. Layton, so glad you could finally join us. With you here, we now have every suspect in the murder of Dr. Schrader gathered in this room. I wonder if this chummy is also going to accuse us of being a murderer. A few days ago, renowned archaeologist Dr. Andrew Schrader was found dead in his London home. His murderer is still at large, but look at you. Look around you. 
you could very well be sitting next to the culprit. A suspect? Me? Utter nonsense. What reason would I possibly have to kill a man I don't even know? A bit slow on the uptake, eh? Mr. Beluga, every person in this room is after the Elysium box. That box ties each of you to our dead man, so there's no doubt that one of you here did the deed. I'm sure putting this case together has been a triumph of police work, Inspector. So tell me, what facts have you unearthed in these last few days? Hehe, <laughs> watch closely now, Mr. Layton. This is how we unravel mysteries in Scotland Yard. You have my full attention, Inspector. Please, hypothesize away. I first learned the full sense through the evidence obtained in the late doctor's office. According to his notes, Schrader spent quite some time in town researching the Elysium box. When I learned that he died shortly after returning home to London, everything came into focus. I believe our criminal first spotted the doctor when he was inquiring about the Elysium box here in town. Spying a chance to obtain the coveted box, the fiend followed the doctor to London and murdered him. Oh, now that's a deduction worthy of London's finest. So, out with it then. Who's our man? Hold your horses, I'm getting there. To summarize, the culprit must have been to full sense before. What's more, this person must have also had the ability to travel freely between here and London. Now, as we all know, only those affiliated with the Monetary Express have that ability. And now all eyes turn to Mr. Beluga, eh? Well, turn them back. Mr. Beluga stated he was in London conducting business that day, and his alibi checked out. Huh? But if it's not Mr. Beluga... That's right. Our murderer stands before us. And his name is Send Me Thunder! And the thunder? And the lightning? What? You gotta be kidding, man! I know Mr. Beluga has ordered you to turn over every stone in this town to find the Elysium box. He worked you like a dog, and you resented that treatment. So you decided to beat him to the punch and make off with his precious box. This is an outrage! Samuel, what do you have to say for yourself? I'm being framed! You got it. You're out of your gourd, man! Mm, now I see why the box eluded me for so long. You've been holding out on me, Samuel. No, I haven't. I swear on my favorite leather pants! That's a new one for me. Come on, Unko. You know me. I never do anything that crazy. You'll have plenty of time to tell the story back in London from a cell. Now come along. So it was the conductor after all. I didn't think he had it in him, but at least we could all rest easy now. Professor, do you really think Sammy could have committed such an awful crime? Well, we all we have to do is go on this single torn all we have to go on is this single torn photograph recovered from the doctor's room. Oh, so that's the Elysium box. Wow, very fancy. I like the cute goat design on the top. Oh my. Flora. Hmm? Thank you, Flora. I knew something didn't feel quite right, but thanks to you, it's all come into focus. Really? Do tell, Professor. Oh, come on, officer, man. My only crime is rocking, and rocking ain't a crime. Yeah, let me go. You come along quietly if you know what's good for you. Just a moment, Inspector Shelby. I believe we've all committed a large and rather unfortunate oversight. Can't you see I'm in the middle of something right now, Nathan? Where are you going with this, Professor? No one here has ever seen the Elysian box that we've been looking for. The one and only piece of visual evidence we possess is this torn photograph. And get to the point. The point is this, Inspector. The only person who could know what the Elysian box looks like is the suspect you're after. 
And it is this person who must have stolen the box in the first place. Yes, and I've got the slippery fellow right here. Ow! Take it easy, officer. Pipe down, you hooligan. And watch the hair, will ya? Wow! Sorry to disappoint, but he's not the culprit. Score. What? Stop talking in circles and get to the point, Leighton. Who should be wearing the handcuffs? Isn't it obvious? If the criminal does indeed reside in our midst, he or she would be the only one of us to see the Elysian box in person, which means the culprit. Hmm? Huh? Huh? Must be you there. What? Flora! <laughs> Inspector, look here. That's the photo I dropped. Indeed. This, for those who don't know, is a piece of evidence recovered by the inspector. It's a photo of the Elysian box, and I have every confidence that this shot depicts the real thing. So, this little knick-knack here is what started the whole mess? Well, to be honest, it's a bit outlandish for my taste. What well, with the bizarre frog head on it. Aha! Uh -huh. I see you've put the pieces together too, Luke. Inspector, the emblem decorating the top of this box depicts not a frog, but a goat. A goat? Not by my eyes, it doesn't. That's just it. This photograph is missing the piece containing the goat's eyes. In its current form, the image looks like a frog to most people, as was the case with you, Inspector. Flora, dear, I believe you said the design looked like a cute goat, did you not? <sighs> well, that clears things up nicely. If you say you saw a goat, that must mean you've seen the real Elysian box before. Are you really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well played, Leighton. I'm sure you're very proud of yourself for seeing through my disguise again. Curse you, Leighton! And curse you automatically set up 3DS layout screen! Curse you and that foppish hat of yours! Don Paolo? I beat you to the box, and given a little more time, I would have beaten you to cracking its secret. And of course, the hers in fortune would have been mine! But that ship has sailed now. So you're the one who had the Elysium box all along. Another brilliant deduction from Leighton's apprentice. Clearly he's learned from the best. <laughs> but yes, you're right, little man. I stole it off that old fool while he was snoozing on the floor. The geezer probably caught a cold sleeping on the ground like that. Not that I had one, one iota. Snoozing? But Dr. Schrader wouldn't sleep on the floor. Hey, wait a second. If you've been posing as Flora, then where's the real Flora? Oh, she's probably making hay angels with the cows in that old dropstone barn I left her in. Or maybe she's just sitting there fuming because you blumbers didn't even notice we switched places. But I must thank you two dolts for your help. You've given me more than enough information. The jig may be up, but the dance is far from over. I'm so close to unlocking the secret of the Elysian box. Now I need merely take this box to the... Hold it right there, you scoundrel. Gah! I've got a lot of questions, and you'll answer them once I've escorted you back to London. Where do you think you're going? Ah, I got you, you slippery devil. Ugh, you meddlesome oaf! You have no idea just how slippery I can be! 
Ugh! Don't just stand there! The worm's getting away! <laughs> Did you really think a soft-bodied flatfoot like yourself could catch me? So long, Leighton! Yeah! <laughs> hmm. Think you can give me the slip, eh? I'll catch you yet! Oh, wait for me, Inspector! <laughs> I think I love their butts. Wow, look at the three of them shake a leg and a booty. I didn't think they had it in them. I must say, I never once suspected Don Paolo had been posing as Flora, and for so long. I sure hope the real Flora is okay. We absolutely can't forget to pick her up on the way back to London. Of course we won't. But I'm sure Flora is having a grand old time playing with the cows. Another thing I can't get out of my head is what Don Paolo said about Dr. Schrader. The way he was talking, it didn't sound like he killed Dr. Schrader. But if he didn't, who did? I think you're spot on there, Luke. Something else is responsible for the doctor's death. Right now, I'd say the Elysium Box is the key to learning what that something was. Then I guess we reached a, ha a dead end. <sighs> if, Don if only Don Paolo hadn't run off with the... Professor, look! Well, look at that. Don Paolo must have dropped it when he was running away from the Inspector Chelmy. So this is it, the Elysian Box. At last, the box! Inside sleeps the key to uncovering a massive family fortune. I beg your pardon, sir? Mr. Layton, I'm going to ask you to hand over that box now. As a son of the late Duke Kerzin, I am the rightful owner of that box. This box belongs to the Harrisons. You hard of hearing, boy. Inside this box is the key to cracking the secret of the Harrison fortune. Seeing as how I share the bloodline, that box should pass into my hands and no one else's. Oh my, that does change things. I suppose we'll have to. Mr. Beluga, listen to yourself. You're no more entitled to that box than I am, or any other person in this room for that matter. You listen here, Porter. This is none of your business, so I suggest you keep your opinions to yourself. No, I'm sorry, but I won't stand by and watch you claim that box as your own. If anyone has a rightful claim to that box, it is the current Duke of Folsom himself. Besides, I've heard about you. You turned your back on this town and left your own f of your own free will. In my book, your claim to be the fortune was lost the day you walked out of full sense. Oh, is that so? You've got some nerve, buddy. If what Cran says is true, I'm afraid I can't hand this box over to you in good conscience, sir. Hey, Uncle! What do you say we give up on chasing this box? Keeping stuff on the DL is exhausting. Don't you tell me how to run my affairs, Samuel. You've forgotten who signed your paychecks. I never even wanted to be a conductor in the first place. Plus, Mickey plus paint errand boy was getting old man. It's more than a guy like me can take. Sammy Thunder wasn't born to work a 9 to 5 gig. Sammy Thunder was born to rap! Hey world, I'm climbing back on the rock train and riding it to the top. Yeah! Hmm, Samuel, what are you babbling about? Come back here at once. I'm sorry, Mr. Beluga, but I think I'll have to hold on to this box for the moment. Fine, do what you want. I hope that awful box curses all of you twice over. <sighs> well, that takes care of that. The box's disappearance. The villain who made off with the Elysium box was none other than Don Paolo, brilliant scientist and self-proclaimed nemesis to Professor Layton. To find riches associated with the antique, he disguised himself as Flora and tailed Luke and Layton. And then also takes care of Beluga's search. Beluga was searching for the Elysium box, which he believed would kill him on the location of the Herzen family fortune. As a member of the Herzen family, he felt entitled to any family riches, though some people in Fulsense disagree strongly. 
we've completed half of the mysteries. Things are going to be speeding up from here on out, so in due time, we'll get all the answers that we're looking for. So it seems Don Paolo wasn't responsible for the Doctor's death in the end. Maybe it really was the Elysium Box's fault after all. Yes, it sounds like the Doctor has already collapsed by the time Don Paolo arrived on the sea. Perhaps you're right, Luke. The box could very well contain a lethal element that killed the Doctor. But without seeing the box's effect in action, how can we be sure? Surely you don't mean... I do, Luke. We must open the box ourselves. It's the only way. Please just hold on a moment. Hmm? Katya? Is there any way I can convince you to let me have that box? It's of vital importance. Before I do that, I would need to know more first. Why is this box so important to you? I I'm sorry, it's not for me to say. But I must deliver that box to... To somebody important, I must. Who is this person? I... I can't tell you anymore. But once I'm done, I'm certain this awful curse will go away forever. The curse will end, and... And everything will be over and done with, and he'll... Whatever do you mean, dear? Help! Somebody! Anybody! Come quick! Somebody else just got taken away to hers and castle! The vampire there's gonna suck his blood and then he's gonna steal his soul. Why did it have to be him? Why? He was such a stand-up guy, too! What? No, that's impossible! Wait, Katia, where are you running off to? Wow, she sure left in a hurry. Maybe all that vampire talk scared her. Do you know what she was talking about? I feel like I could only follow half of what she said. I'm as confused as you are, Luke. But after our discussion, I am doubly sure that this box contains a greater secret. The path to understanding everything lies right before us. While potentially perilous, opening the box seems to be the only course of action left to us. Understood, Professor. Good. Let's take this to our room so we can open the box away from prying eyes. The Professor and Luke decide to head up to their room in the hotel. Now before we continue on with anything else, I kind of wanted to talk about Don Paolo's inclusion in this game. It was a surprise to me simply because I wasn't expecting them to do it twice, and not really in the good way, because like... I'm pretty sure, sorry if this counts as a spoiler, but like, Don Paolo just does not appear for the rest of the game. He was just here as like another guy who was trying to steal the fortune or whatever. And that's really all he ever does. Once we find him out, then he disappears, then he leaves. It's kind of lame, honestly, and also doesn't really make sense when you think about it. It's kind of like with Team Rocket, how they only get stopped because Pikachu always kicks their butt over and over again. But if like they try to rob the same place twice, then uh, chances are they could succeed because Pikachu isn't there anymore to stop them. So you think that instead of uh, switching places with Flora and trying to uh, fool Leighton and Luke into thinking that he's Flora, he could have just kidnapped Flora and then uh, went back to the Curious Village and... Uh, stolen her family fortune instead so and I, I guess that would uh, force Leighton and Luke to halt the investigation immediately because if Flora was missing for an extended period of time then um, then I guess they would go look for her but at this point in time after uh, he got found out he could just go back to where Flora is kidnap her and then go to the curious village and steal her fortune and then he's good to go but he doesn't do that maybe Chelmy like smashes his little helicopter thingy and he's able to get away I don't know but it just seems kind of weird that like uh he got kind of shoehorned into this plot and like doesn't have any actual relevance to it because he's only here for this moment and we're never going to see him again for the rest of the game but whatever that's just my two cents on the matter but now that's taken care of we have a whole lot more information now and most importantly the Elysium box let's see if this curse is all that it's been talked up to be Finally, the Elysian box. Indeed, Luke. Oh, uh, 
box is empty and we're still alive then it would seem my theory was correct what do you mean professor i missed a puzzle even after all that backtracking we must head back to town and do a bit more asking around i need to confirm my suspicions the professor needs to confirm his suspicions Uh, do you got anything new for us? No, you do not, but thanks for step for stepping up and keeping the box away from Beluga, though. Good evening, Sears. Please forgive my outburst earlier. That wasn't very professional of me, and I'm not even a main character. Not at all. Your testimony was incredibly helpful. Listening to you talk, I got the impression you were well-versed in the Herzen family history. Well, I suppose you could say that. When he was still alive, Duke Herzen often favored our fine hotel with his patronage. I have uh, very warm memories of this kindness towards me, even when I was just a lowly bellhop. Back when the Duke was still with us, the whole of the four sons the whole of the full sons buzzed with energy and activity. Uh, but once the mining stopped and the Duke passed on, our town turned into quite a gloomy place. After his passing, who stepped in to take his place? Did he have any children? As I recall, Mr. Beluga's brother stepped up to take the Duke's place. That's really all I know about the situation, though. I've heard our current Duke is quite young. Add on to the vampire rumors, which I'm sure you've heard of, and you know everything I do. Well then, let's head on out. And hey, Sammy, buddy, how you doing? Yo, it's my main dudes! Oh, God darn. Well, he said main dudes, so that's not as bad as just saying my dudes. Like... I know it's kind of dangerous to, I guess the kids call it subtweet. I know it's kind of dangerous to subtweet the entirety of the internet all at once, but I seriously like throw up a bit in my mouth every time I hear someone say, my dude. Let's try and kill that habit, huh? What do you say? Let's just cancel that stinking catchphrase because it's so stinking stupid and obnoxious. You're the one. You're the only reason I didn't catch that bogus charge. To say thanks, I pulled some strings with the museum curator and got him to open the place up for you. It's not much, but maybe you'll find some righteous info there to help your case. Make sure you check it out. Thanks, Sammy. It's got pretty hairy. It's gotten pretty hairy back. It got pretty hairy back there for a little bit, didn't it? Jesus Christ. I still haven't gotten over the discovery that Mr. Beluga is actually part of the Herzen family. Yeah, my uncle never really told me much about it all. I just know he had some kind of blowout with his dad, the Duke, and decided to leave for good. He did a he did talk a lot about the brother and left behind though. He has a real soft spot for the guy. But now it looks like that gnarly vampire is running around the castle. I hate to say it, but I doubt anyone survived that wicked scary monster moving in. And we got a diary key from him as well. Their access guaranteed, the professor and Luke decide to visit the Herzen Museum again. I guess that's where we'll be going in the next episode, and everyone wants tea! Oh my god, we need to hurry up and find that last tea ingredient. Perhaps that hit, uh, puzzle that's in Granny Rules and Shack is the one that we are looking for. Just want to make sure these guys got nothing for us. Head on over to Granny Rules and Shack, we might end the episode off right then and there. I know it was kind of light in the puzzle department, but it was very heavy in the plot department, so hopefully that evens out. Uh, let's see, Granny Rilton. Head on into her house inside her house and get jars and cans one. A long line of jars and cans sits on the counter. Your job is to rearrange these items so that both jars and cans are grouped with the items of the same type. However, in doing so, you must always move two containers at once. Move items around by touching the red icon between two containers and dragging the, and dragging the selected pair of items with your stylus. Hint number one. This puzzle is all about finding the right order in which to make your moves. The more organized players out there should be able to solve this one on instinct alone. Since it's a relatively simple puzzle, don't expect to find any more hints. Instead, you'll get some neat trivia on this type of puzzle. So if you're short on hint coins, stay away from hints 2 and 3 on this one, okay? So it's prepping you for some very hilarious hints that don't actually do anything. 
So, hint number two. This is another one of those puzzles that's been around practically forever. Variations on it exist across the globe and have even been said to be played in places like Edo era Japan. Hey, Edo. Hint number three. In Japan, this puzzle is often presented using pieces from Go, a strategic board game originally from China. In England, the puzzle is often set up using silver and gold coins. Well, ain't that just fancy? And the solution is a step-by-step -step thing, so I guess we're gonna go ahead and move it around. What the fruit do they, what? How, how do these, okay. They move like this. So. I see, that's confusing. Huh. The first one they want me to move though is that. Okay, are we done yet? No. Uh, second one is right here. And the third one is right here. Move the two jars left to the empty slots like this, and you're good to go. Consider this puzzle solved. Huh. Wonderful. Okay, that was really funny. It wasn't the funny hints that I was thinking of, but it was still funny to run into that. You can solve this puzzle in as few as four moves. How many moves did you take? Uh, four, because I'm a pro. And we're good. That was unfortunately not the one we were looking for, so we are still short on tea supplies, right? Yes, we are. Oh, we got a key. I forgot about that. Let's check that out, and then we'll end the episode off. All around town, people are falling ill to a disease that has no name. Some of the common folk have been saying that our town has fallen under a curse. As the only son remaining to watch over full sense, I can't even think of leaving. The thought of the work, the thought would be more disturbing were it not for her. As long as she's by my side, I have the strength to stay and protect this town. Things are becoming a bit clearer now. And next time on Professor Layton in the Diabolical Box, we'll begin our search in the museum and see what we can find. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.